Being as an expectant boy growing up and experiencing a lot of the Commodore 64 games for the first time more recently, I've been wanting to play all the things that made C64 owners dribble back in the 1980s. I still have a way to go, but I've played a fair few in the last six months or so, and I was looking for more in this 1987 issue of Zap Magazine. I came across a game that received a score of exactly 50%, and I was curious as to see why, and it turned out the game was just kind of okay. One of those games that if anybody asked you if it was any good, you might just reply with a simple meh. And it got me thinking, I mean sure I'll keep highlighting the great games and the really shit ones too, but what about those poor sods in the middle? The ones that are just okay. They're not great, they're not bad, they're just meh. It turns out there was just 21 reviews in Zap's lifetime with a score of exactly 50%. One of those was a compilation of games that was wrongly scored. A few sports titles and quiz games and a couple of nasty text adventures, one of which was even about the archers. So I cast those to the side as I wanted the juicy ones, the games you might have actually played. There might even be some here you loved. There certainly was for me. So here is the top 10 games that made you go meh. Games. Meh. Games. Meh. Games. Meh. As reviewed by Zap Magazine in order of okayness. Number 10 will be the least meh, and we'll count down to find the ultimate meh champion of the Commodore 64. Exciting times. Number 10, and the least meh game here is one of those old top-down racer types. I'm a sucker for these ever since the Super Sprint days, but this time it's trucks, and all the fun that goes with that apparently. This is a very late game to the party in the very much embedded 16-bit days of 1993. So late actually that Zap Magazine had even changed its name to Commodore Force, and was going through that zany look all magazines did at the time. Far out dude, wild crazy, etc, etc. The boys at um, Commodore Force were split on this one, which I guess is where the score comes from, with Ian flipping hating it. It's about as interesting as the Mash Fitz Treaty, as realistic as Northern Lamont's budget, and as dated as the House of Lords. Aim for the top of the World Championship leaderboard dribbles the sleeve, and they are right. After two games, you'll wish Shavora Dolphson. Not sure he was a fan, and I think his criticism went too far. It's obviously not his bag, as although it's blimmin' hard, it's actually quite a lot of fun, and the controls feel about right for turning a juggernaut at 70 miles per hour. I didn't mind this at all, and certainly didn't find it meh in the slightest. This time we have an actual budget title, which, call me stupid, often made magazine reviewers groan before they'd even played it. It's a simple platformer where you must return each item asked for by the ghosty dude so your missus can mix it up in the cauldron. On first appearance this looks like a straightforward challenge, and it would be if the jump mechanic worked properly. Maybe there is an art to it, perhaps there really isn't and it's just shit, but for two quid and stupid jumping aside, I thought this was actually pretty good. Graphically pleasing, nice cutesy character, decent sound, and I wanted to play it more than I'd given myself time for, which says something on its own. I think the issue with the Zap review, in all fairness, was that they were split. Two of the reviewers praised the game, and the other one really didn't. I loathe it. I hate waiting for a Nazi to pass before I can jump. All this crucial timing infuriates me, and I despise the repetition. Oddy looks sickeningly cute, and I found it more rewarding than let him die. Just take that smile off his face. Yeah, say how you feel there, mate. But like international truck racing, I thought this was okay actually, despite its stupid jumping. Now, this has to be one of the most disappointing games I have played in a long time. Okay, it's a budget release, but by 1991, there really is no excuse in releasing something so poorly put together. The pros. I think the Ninja Rabbit looks great. 
nice big sprite that is excellently defined. Um, the backdrops are okay. And I guess that's about it. The fighting element of the game is a steaming turd. You have to hold down the fire button to then get a rather underwhelming volley of moves to choose from. Whatever you do, your opponent will hurt you and eventually you will lose all your character energy bar and die. The first time this happened, I just stared at the screen and pondered if it was worth bothering with a second time. Spoiler, it wasn't. Zap pretty much agree with me, but were far more generous with their scores than their remarks suggest. Graphically, the game is a mess. The backgrounds are shoddily drawn and the characters, although occasionally well drawn, are poorly animated. So sad to say, Ninja Rabbits isn't really worth hopping down the shops for. They even released an international Ninja Rabbits after this, but trust me, I'm not going there after this shit show. This gets a meh rating of 2 out of 10, because it's not meh, it's more just, why? So Alphonse has f***ed up big time, and after pissing about being a mad scientist, has managed to clone himself. Eager not to lose his job, he must try his utmost to complete each of the five levels whilst containing uh, uh, himself at the same time. Now, I love the concept. This is what 8-bit gaming is about, wacky and weird ideas, but it has to be flipping playable also. Goose stepping and Hitler references aside, the Zap team's short synopsis of the game is on point. There are two major problems that is gained. Firstly, there are any type different swings, and secondly, there's far too days recourse. I do feel they gave this one 50% because of the opportunity to say they were in two minds to recommend it. Because in all honesty, this game isn't down the middle, it's just shit. The levels that I've seen and the one I have played are simple enough, but moving our friend around them isn't. Climbing the stairs successfully appears to be a random affair with me falling off or failing to get on the stupid things in the first place for no real obvious reason. It's quite possibly one of the worst platformers I've ever had to control I reckon. It really is that bad. They surely added a zero to the score because it's Quicksilver who had a decent reputation for games, but this wanker was nearly eight quid. Scandalous. Two and a half out of ten. Ah, feud. Now this was a big favourite of mine on the old Specky, which was the original game and handed over to someone else for the allegedly bugged C64 version. Bug myths aside, it's a nice looking game with a nice little premise. Kill your brother, no idea why, before he kills you by concocting spells from your spellbook, mixing them up in your cauldron and attacking your sibling with them. Now it's nice to have little villagers wandering around doing their little daily tasks, and little huts and flower beds and shit like that make it a pleasure to look around. It's probably another game that would benefit from mapping and the Zap guys were kinder to this one despite the down the middle score given. Feud should prove a good buy if you're into mapping as there are plenty of locations and a few puzzles which shouldn't take too long to complete. Feud hasn't really got any immediate sparkle but having said that you might find it worthwhile to persevere. I kind of get the wandering around can be a bit boring but yeah, not meh enough for me. 3.5 out of 10. Playing like a poor man's impossible mission, we have Nexus by uh, Nexus. Shame Ocean didn't do a game called Ocean or, uh, actually I'll just shut up now. Stupidly small playing window aside, this little run and gun or kick and run is not that bad. One of the reviewers in Zap went into detail on how the cassette box with everything removed was more interesting than anything else the game had to offer. And another went into detail about the struggle Paul Voicey had getting the game published, sympathizes with him and then duly rips the game apart. Them the breaks, I guess. I was quite drawn to the start sequence, riding up on the jet ski and meeting up with the rest of the gang. 
but I made the mistake of kicking the shit out of my helper, who would then beat me every time I tried to wait for the lift to turn up, which made me regret my life choices, as getting into the lift was about as easy as getting Alphonse down the stairs in that stupid schizo game. Once I got past that though, it was really just a case of looking for shit in different rooms. Quite good fun beating up or shooting the other guys, and the soundtrack wasn't all that bad either. It's a bit framey, and too much screen estate is used on the control panel below, but 50% is a bit harsh here. So I'm going to give it a meh score of 4 out of 10. Rockstar Ate My Hamster was massive when I was a kid. I played this for hours on my Spectrum and loved coming up with my own hit singles and album names, trying to cover those gold discs. On the Commodore and 35 years into the future, and well, the game pretty much looks like a lift and shift of the Spectrum one in all honesty, which is okay because the artwork is pretty good really. The look of the different artists available and some of the names made me genuinely laugh out loud. Some of the humour wouldn't pass today, with Clive often told to go slit his wrists. Uh, yeah, thanks for that boss. So why meh then? Well, Zap didn't think it had enough options. It looks and sounds nice enough, but despite all the cosmetic niceties, it suffers from a slight lack of the one thing it really shouldn't be without. Gameplay. Playing it now, I have to agree with them, although I think 50% is a little harsh on the game. There is just very little to do outside of creating your album though. Most of the gameplay is raising money by gigging with very little else to do. The tunes on offer when the chart is released is fun and makes good use of the C64 sound capabilities. Surprisingly, this was a full pricer and I didn't recall that at the time. I always thought it was a budget game, and if it was, then I think it could have gotten away with being fairly basic. 5 out of 10. Look, it's another wander around looking for stuff affair. This time dressed up as a uh, Camelot Warrior game called uh, Camelot Warriors. A reoccurring theme here are games that actually don't look that bad until you actually play them. And this is no exception. The jump mechanic is weird. You have a sword that you can only wield at waist height, which means anything small will kill you. Check out this killer plant. I can't kill it because it's not in my swing radius. Brilliant. Zap kind of hated this the first time round as an, uh, uh, oh, here we go, Arolia, Areola Soft, <laughs> every time, full pricer, but bumped the score a little to 50% when re-released under Mastertronic's budget label, presumably because the game should have been a budget game in the first place. This is the sort of game that I get tired of very easily. Most of the time is spent idly wandering around, nothing more than the programmer's self-indulgent maze. Yawn. For me, honestly, it sits somewhere between being okay, I guess, and just being a bit crap. It's definitely got some meh factor. Seven out of 10. May's game come arcade adventure as described by our beloved Zap team is the 1985 Gremlin graphics release, Metabolis. Another full pricer that hits like a budget game with another stupid plot that I'm kind of down with. This time you are flapping around as a canary with a human brain looking for a serum to turn you back into a person so you can meet a wizard who can cure your dodgy canary heart before nuking the bad guys and escaping to relative safety. All seems fair enough, right? Well, it would be, but this game is really just about flying between the 150 or so screens, looking for objects, and then eventually dying of heart failure or some nasty that insta-kills you on that occasion. Zap made some comparisons to Saber Wolf, but it's not in the same league, and I ultimately, see what I did there, 
found it boring. I found the game a mite tedious to play. It did enough to make me have one more go, but it soon became apparent that boredom was setting in whilst I was playing it, and one stupid death later, I was out. 7.5 out of 10. And so here we are, the most meh game to exist on the Commodore 64 and the one that actually featured in the magazine that I own, Tarzan. Blimey, what a game. Very much a where the flipping heck am I? Not sure a map is even going to help type game as the backdrop and screens look very similar as you move around. After returning to the jungle on holiday with Lady Jane, she has been kidnapped to force Tarzan to look for seven gemstones which have been stolen from the tribemen who have Jane. Tarzan can use a torch to help in the dark caves, ropes to get across dangerous pits, and fight off such creatures as lions, snakes, and spiders no less. This all sounds exciting, but the game design sucks all the excitement out in one foul swoop. It doesn't move particularly well, the fighting mechanic is horrid, and the jumping is not much better. Once again, it's a surprise it's a full pricer. It's got budget written all over it. Rob Hubbard was involved in the soundtrack apparently, but the bongo drum background makes you want to cheese grate your own ears off after a bit. But at least it keeps you awake enough to persevere. Zap were horizontally subdued in their review for a change, and I'm not ashamed to say they were mostly right in what they said. This is another in a long line of fair to middling arcade adventures. The graphics are good enough, the sound works well, and there is a large map to explore. But there are no original features here to inspire or enthrall. Personally, I'd wait for something more exciting to be released. So, there you have it. This is a perfect example of a game that isn't bad, it isn't good, it really is just one big steaming pile of meh. 8 out of 10. After all that, I'm off to watch some paint dry, or some grass growing, I might read the dictionary, go clothes shopping, eat dry bread, watch some water boil, read up on GDPR maybe, listen to the shipping forecast, watch a nil-nil draw in football, or maybe I'll just play some more Tarzan. Thanks for watching, and yeah, I might see you on the next one. Bye for now.